we have a selection of books here that we're going to use for the 6 plus 1 traits of writing to model as mentor texts. So first off, when we talk about 6 plus 1 writing, we talk about the different traits that are used, and one of them, in this case, is word choice. Word choice involves using the right words in writing that will give clarity and evoke feelings and moods, likes and dislikes, and helps to create a vivid picture in the reader's mind. Students become aware that there are different ways to express their thoughts. They become more aware of the use and power of language by adding new and varied words within their writing. Using vivid, colorful, and dynamic words will expand and enrich student writing. In fact, when we look at word choice here with these books, these mentor textbooks, we're looking at choosing the right words and using them correctly, making them fun and interesting so they help your readers see what you're talking about. Try not to use the same words over and over and over again. If you don't choose your words carefully, your reader may not understand what you're trying to say. So here we have a selection of books that we call mentor books. And uh, when we introduce students to the 6 plus 1 traits of writing, many teachers read aloud a text that exemplifies the trait, in this case, the trait of word choice. This is the notion of mentor text when we do that. Students learn the evidence of the trait from mentors and how to imitate it within their own writings. Such mentor text often includes picture books. The text is short, which is important for a mini lesson, and it's engaging for students. All right, here we have a book called Piggy Pie, written by Margie Palatini. And this is a book we're using as a mentor text for the 6 plus 1 traits of writing, and specifically for the trait of word choice, although this is a great book to use for all sorts of the different traits. I mean, you really could use it for sentence fluency or voice or ideas or even organization. But this one I'm using here for word choice because it's just so rich in nouns and verbs and adjectives that really work. So as I read through it, take a look at how she does word choice throughout this book. All right, here we go. This is Piggy Pie by Margie Palatini, and it's read by Mr. C, the teacher. And for more books like this and for 6 plus 1 traits of writing ideas and activities and lessons, go to earlygradelessons.com. Gritch the witch woke up grouchy, grumpy, and very hungry. Her belly grumbled for something delicious, something delightful, something special. But what? It wasn't purple mouse tail stew. No, she ate that yesterday for lunch. Maybe some mashed dragon tongue pudding? No, Gritch wasn't in the mood for anything quite that sweet. Perhaps a taste of boiled black buzzard feet. That always made her mouth water. No, not today. Today Gritch wanted something truly tasty, something really yummy, something special. And that could only mean... Piggy pie. Yes, yes, piggy pie. I can taste those plump, juicy pink piggies right now, Gritch said, smacking her lips. She hurried to the pantry and pulled down her old hag cookbook from the top shelf. She picked off a spider, blew off the dust, and turned to the secret recipe on page 342. Gritch ran her bony finger with the long green nail down the list of ingredients. One eye of a fly. She checked the pantry shelves. No problem, said Gritch. Two shakes of a rattlesnake's rattle. No problem, said Gritch. Three belly hairs of a possum. No problem, said Gritch. Eight plump piggies. Problem, screeched Gritch. I don't have any piggies. How can I make piggy pie without even one puny pink pig? Gritch pulled her hair. She stomped her feet. She paced the floor. She wanted piggy pie. She wanted piggy pie very much. Hmm, she said, tapping the lucky wart on her chin. Now where would I find eight plump pigs? Gritch thought and thought and thought. Aha, she shouted with a jump. The circus. Yes, yes, the circus. The circus? No, no, not the circus. You don't find pigs in the circus. 
she thought harder. Aha! she shouted with a jump. The zoo! Yes, yes, the zoo! The zoo? No, no, not the zoo. You don't find pigs in the zoo. She thought much harder. The farm? Yes, yes, the farm! You find pigs on the farm. There still was just one teeny tiny little problem. Where to find a farm? Where else? Gritch let her bony fingers do the walking and opened the yellow pages to F, where she found a very large ad. This was it. Old MacDonald's Farm. Call E-I-E-I-O. Just over the river and through the woods, we have ducks, chickens, and piggies. Gritch put her broomstick in gear and headed over the river and through the woods to Old MacDonald's Farm. I've got you in my sights now, you little porkers, she cackled as she circled overhead. Surrender, piggies. Gritch zoomed in for a thump, 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 landing. She spit straw, fanned her still smoking tootsie, and lifted her goggles. There wasn't a pig in sight. Where did they all go? Gritch shouted to a duck. Hey, duck, I said, where are all the piggies? I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. The duck quack quacked here, it quack quacked there. Here it quacked, there it quacked, everywhere it quack quacked. No piggies. What do you mean, no piggies, you dizzy duck? Gritch screeched into his bill. I just saw a passel of piggies down here not a minute ago. Hand over those hogs, you little quacker. No piggies, quacked the duck. Gritch pulled her hair, she stomped her feet, she even threatened the duck with one of her most evil spells. The duck was not impressed. It wasn't even scared. It gave Gritch another quack and waddled away. So, who needs a dumb duck? Gritch mumbled. Being careful where she stepped, Gritch wandered across the meadow. Yoo-hoo, she shouted. Moo? You, Gritch said to the cow, where are the piggies? I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. The cow moo-mooed here, moo-mooed there, here it mooed, there it mooed, everywhere it mooed-mooed. No piggies. What do you mean, no piggies, you lumpy-looking cow? Screamed Gritch. I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. Fork over the pork, you walking milk machine, or I'll curdle your cream. No piggies mooed the cow. Gritch pulled her hair. She stomped her feet. She even threatened the cow with one of her most evil spells. The cow stared at Gritch, swatted a fly with its tail, and lumbered away. Cows! Who needs them? Gritch muttered. So she tried the barnyard where she stopped a chicken in its tracks. Okay, bird brain, where are the piggies? I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. The chicken cluck clucked here, cluck clucked there, here it clucked, and there it clucked, everywhere it cluck clucked, no piggies. What do you mean, no piggies, you feathered drumstick? Grit screeched, what's going on here? Where's the boss of this heap of hay? The chicken flapped a wing toward old MacDonald. Gritch looked him over once, twice. You're old MacDonald, she said. Don't look much like your picture, do you? The farmer thumbed his suspenders and shrugged. Look, shorty, I've been quack-quacked here, moo-mooed there, and cluck-clucked everywhere all over this farm. I need eight plump piggies for piggy pie. Where are the piggies? The farmer looked here, he looked there, here he looked, there he looked, everywhere he looked and looked. No piggies. What do you mean, no piggies? You flea-bitten seed spreader. You must have piggies. Gritch pulled her hair. She stomped her feet. She even threatened him with one of her most evil spells. No piggies, 
Her stomach growled, it grumbled, but there were no piggies. There would be no piggy pie. Now, what was she going to eat? Psst! 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 Excuse me, little lady. Wolf's the name. Let me give you some advice. Forget about the pigs. Forget about the pigs, said Gritch, eyeing the wolf. He nodded. They're too tricky. Trust me, I've been chasing three little pigs for days. He huffed and puffed. I'm starving. Look at me. I'm nothing but skin and bones. Gritch pinched his arm. Well, not quite, she grinned. Mr. Wolf, I have the most wonderful idea. I was thinking, since you haven't eaten and I haven't eaten, why don't you come home with me for lunch? I'm a very good cook. Why, that does sound tempting, the wolf said, as he looked at Gritch and smacked his lips. Are you sure it wouldn't be any problem? Problem? Gritch grinned. No problem at all, she said as they walked off arm in arm. I always enjoy having a wolf for lunch. Well, there you go. Yeah, what a great story. Piggy Pie, it's hilarious. I love the way it's old McDonald's farm and the pigs disguise themselves as all the different animals and even as the farmer. And at the end, the wolf is planning to eat the witch, but the witch is planning to eat the wolf. I wonder who's going to eat who. Anyways, we use this book as a mentor book, the text of it for uh, word choice. And there's just some wonderful word choices in here. Kind of a little bit of the, the sarcastic voice comes out of the witch as she calls the different animals different things. Get a little further into the book here. And I love the, uh, I love the use, well, to begin with, of the song, you know. The duck quack quacked here and quack quack there. Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack. Right for old MacDonald had a farm. But we don't worry too much about the song. What I love is just the, the way that she, she kind of insults the different animals. Her word choice in here that the author uses, you know, dizzy duck, right? And uh, hand over those hogs, you little quacker. I love that. And what do you mean, you lumpy looking cow? Fork over the pork, you walking milk machine. <laughs> what a great word choice to be able to tie into with the animal, but also kind of have the sarcastic voice that's coming out. So just terrific word choice throughout. When you do your writing, what kind of word choice will you make? It's a great story for six plus one traits of writing. And if you want more books and more ideas for six plus one traits of writing and lots of other lessons, go to earlygradelessons.com.